What is up guys? In this video we're going to be picking up a JV4 kit for the Q50 at Concept Z Performance. So let's head over. Guys, I just got home from Constance Performance. We went ahead and picked up the JB4. It comes in this red box. I did pay full retail for it. But in this video, we're gonna go ahead and um, start unboxing it, showing you, you guys how to install it. I did purchase the one with pretty much everything, which comes with the Bluetooth and the little harnesses and connections that go to it. So let's go ahead and start unboxing the product. To give you guys a recap of what I just what I just did is your kit comes with this um, I guess kind of like a splicer to wire up the Bluetooth to the module or this ECU whatever you want to call it and it's gonna go together now this part here goes to the red wire so as you can see it's the gray part is on here on the red part or the red wire which is gonna give power to the Bluetooth and then you're going to feed the blue wire that's connected to the little Bluetooth box right here. It's connected to the end and they just twist. So this one's going to go in between. The gray piece has a slice in it where it's going to pretty much make a cut into the red wire, which is going to connect to this blue wire here. And then you're going to go ahead and spin it and then it's going to tighten up. So you should be able to pull this without it coming off. And this one shouldn't move, so make sure it's tight on there. Um, you obviously don't want to cut it because it's just going to splice in there. So that's pretty much what I did. And then what you want to do is put the cover back in. I did feed the blue wire into this here. Just squeeze it, and it's going to make a little hole for you to be able to push it in there. But once you have that done, that's pretty much it. You can put the cover back on, and then you're ready to install it into the car. Now you put the cover back on. Everything's on there really good. It closed up really well, so it shouldn't open back up. Now let's go ahead and install it on the car. Alright, let's go ahead and open up the hood, and then we're going to start installing the JV4 on the car. Now you want to go ahead and remove the cover. Um, but to remove the cover, just pull it up. Be careful though, because you don't want to break it. 
That should come off right off. And you will be installing the connectors here and also here. Do not connect it to the intake map sensors. And it actually goes here to the side. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. So I ran the JB4 through here and put it in this hole right here. Alright guys, so everything's installed. You can you can't even tell that anything is there. And that's what I really wanted. I wanted to pretty much be able to remove this if anything happened. If the dealer saw that I had done something to the car, I could just remove it. Um, they should not be able to tell that I have this. The only thing that you can see is this wire that's right here. Which I ran through the firewall. And that was pretty much it. But everything's in here. If it's perfect. There's the JB4, so if I need to remove it for anything, I could just unplug it, take everything out with no problems. Um, cover went on perfect, no issues. And then if you go over to the firewall, so you guys can see how I ran everything. So, as you can see here, it's plugged into the OBD2, and then it runs up here, goes into the firewall, and it goes right there inside that hole. Um, you, the fender can push up a little bit it doesn't look like it can fit right there but this thing it flexes a little bit you can push it in there and that's how you put it into the firewall but you need to remove this piece right here you need to remove this piece it just has this um, plastic piece that you gotta take off with a flathead and then you pull it out and it comes right off and that way you can just feed it through here fit it through the bolts and then I place the wire in here that way you can't even see it. So that's pretty much it. Um, let's go ahead and turn it on and see how it, if it works or not. This is going to be my first time turning on the car. So whatever happens in the beginning and the initial start is going to happen now. So I'm not sure what's going to happen, but let's see. Okay. Uh, everything seems normal. Um, no check engine lights, no nothing. I did download the JB4 app, so let's check to see if anything's going on. Uh, so it looks like I have to create an account or something. Uh, let's go ahead and do that real quick. Alright, so I'm connecting. All I have to do is create an account. Um, password, e email. And then my name that I wanted to use for my account. And it connected. Just had to turn my Bluetooth on. Everything looks like it's working. So gonna mess with it for a little bit to see what I can do it's my first time using it so I'm not really sure exactly what I can do um, I guess you could check if you have any codes delete them if you would like uh, I have no codes that's good display uh, we can start logging so maybe if I go for a drive or something okay so it's almost immediately responding to me pressing the gas, so I press it and it's reading it. So it's on map one, I'm guessing.
this, so I'm going to go over how to operate the JB4 app. Um, to download this app, you actually need to purchase it from the App Store. It was, I believe, close to $30 to purchase the app. Um, so if you do purchase the JB4, in addition, you have to purchase the app, which is going to be like another $30. Um, but, of course, we're not in the car right now. To use the JB4 app, you have to create an account. Um, you will have to go into your settings and there should be a box that gives you the option to create an account and then it's going to ask for your email, your um, username and a password and once you do that you're going to connect it to the car and then it's going to automatically connect um, you, there is a settings button where you're able to automatically connect to the car every single time um, instead of just having to go in there, um, click connect and then it'll connect if you just open up the app it'll automatically connect to the car so you don't have to do it every single time um, the only thing I didn't like is that I couldn't, maybe it's just for my phone, but I can't rotate the screen this way. See it's not doing it, I have my auto rotate on right now. So I don't know if you guys can see that, but I have the auto rotate on and when I go like this, it's not rotating for me. So I kind of wish it would do that because when I'm in the car I like to have it like this, um, instead of having it like this the whole time. Guys, we're going to go over the app and um, a few things that I learned after pretty much using it, but here's the display. You do have the boost along with the RPM, the ignition one, AFR, AFR should be around 14, and then you have the IAT and the map. So of course right now there's no map on it because we're not in the car, but if you double click on it, just like I did right now, you're able to choose your map. So map zero was pretty much going to be your stock map. Now map zero, map zero is going to be your stock map. Um, it goes all the way into map eight. But if you want, inst not instructions, but exactly what each map does, um, you can go into the JB4 website or the Burger Tuning website, and then it will give you um, the exact readings of what each map does. Um, from my understanding, map one is only about one psi, um, three psi. And then map 5 is, um, I believe it is 5 PSI, but in order to run certain maps, um, they say that you may need um, ethanol or 30% of um, E30. So it's pretty much going to be a mix to be able to make E30. Um, from my understanding, it should be safe to run E30 on the car, only 30%, but it's not recommended to run E85, 45 um, on the stock pump. But depending on what you're running on the car is essentially which map you're going to be able to use. But for right now, I'm sticking to map 1. Um, but going up on the map is going to turn out the PSI. Uh, I believe the max is um, 7, which is going to be map 7. And then you have other maps that you can use to pretty much adjust it. When it comes to the GB4 app, you're also able to um, adjust the map itself. So there are certain maps that you can adjust. Um, you can go to a map to modify. And you're able to select on the map. Because we don't have it connected to the car right now, um, I can't really show you guys, but it will show you um, the boost peaks. So it's going to give you the, the RPM, and then with the RPM, you're going to be able to adjust it um, depending on how much boost you want when you're hitting that RPM. So for example, if you're at 1, 1K RPM, you can set the boost to be able to be at 3. Uh, I did notice that the map automatically has it go up as you um, increase your RPM, but once you do that, um, you're able to actually go in there and adjust it yourself. Like let's say instead of having three um, boost at that certain RPM, you're able to maybe even go up a little bit more. Um, uh, that's totally up to you if you want to do that, but I'm going to keep it at a stock setting just because I feel like that's the recommended one and it's going to help the car perform a lot better and hopefully not into running, run into any issues in the future. So the, depending on the map that you select, it's going to beep that many times. So the car is going to beep, um, let's say if you select map one, it'll beep once. If you select map five, the car is going to beep five times to let you know that this is the map that you selected. Let's go over to, to logs. So in logs, it's going to show you um, logs. So for example, if you're, there's automatic logs where it'll automatically track or start tracking what, how fast you're driving and the boost levels and everything and it's going to show you a graph like this. This graph is going to pretty much show you your, um, not your speed, but your boost level, which is going to be the blue bar. And let's get a clear focus on that. 
So the blue bar is going to be your boost. And then you're going to have the red one, which is going to be your pedal on how much you're pushing down on the throttle. Um, after logs, you're able to go to codes. Uh, codes is going to show you any codes that your car may have. You're able to read it, and then you're also able to delete any codes that you have on your um, on your car. So that's pretty much it. But if you go over to settings, settings is where you can pretty much mess with a few things. Um, you can do the automatic logging. Um, you can disable the um, connection. You can also set a new pin. You can pretty much mess with a few things, change gauge settings, um, unit conversion. There's a lot of things that you can do on here. Um, you can clear the Bluetooth um, device if you want to remove it. So um, overall, it is a great device. I do recommend it. There was a huge um, noticeable difference in power and how much the car was pretty much putting down. Um, I haven't done any racing, but um, I do plan on doing that on a few other videos. So please stay tuned. Uh, that's pretty much going to conclude it. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, stay tuned for more videos. Please like and subscribe. Um, share this with your friends. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much going to conclude the video. As I said, the reason I really wanted to do the JV4 is because I'm still under warranty. And I have up to like 70k miles on it. And it, I do plan on doing an EcuTech or Uprift tune in the future. But that's going to be maybe until my warranty is up. I don't want to run the risk of voiding my warranty because I added a tune on there and there are a lot of dealerships that sometimes won't want to work with you and that will pretty much be completely up to you if you want to do that and then your responsibility at that point if you they do decide not to cover it under warranty but yeah um, overall great product no issues at all um, if you have any questions feel free to message me my Instagram name is going to be the same as my YouTube channel Chris C. Leva but that's pretty much going to conclude the video uh, thank you so much for watching I do appreciate everybody that watches my videos and supports the channel. Um, I do plan on doing a lot more things. I still want to do the heat exchanger, um, especially the HK, HK's blow-off house. That's going to be coming up next. So, yeah, thank you so much for watching and until the next one.